colleagues. Uh, first of all, I would like to say hello and thanks to the organizing committee for a kind invitation. And today I'm going to talk about the relationship between chronic nasal obstruction and craniofacial deformities, which is a uh, subject of observation, ENT specialist, pediatrician, pediatric dentist, and orthodontist. Based on most theory of functional matrix, the normal nasal breathing associated with the nasal mastication and swallowing is, um, and other components of head and neck region provides the, the correct muscular action and stimulating the normal craniofacial development. Uh, but uh, the, the data um, uh, in a recent literature supporting this relationship are not without controversy because some authors do not associate the mouth breathing uh, with, uh, as a major factor uh, resulting in a craniofacial deformities. And they support the opinion that the typical feature of long face syndrome is just uh, is uh, just a hereditary pattern and that the mouth uh, breathing should be considered only, a, only as a paraphenomenon. Uh, no matter what the cause, we should say that in predisposed children, uh, chronic mouth breathing may, de may uh, develop the morphological disorders in a critical growth pe period and uh, these morphological disorders uh, depends on magnitude, occurrence, and time of occurrence. Uh, magnitude, duration, and time of occurrence. Uh, what's happened, the normal tongue position influences the normal development of maxilla. And in mouth breathers, the tongue drops down on the floor of the mouth, and which diminish lateral expansive forces on maxilla, which cause the absence of tooth contact over the extended period of time, which caused the excessive eruption of the posterior molar teeth and uh, rotation of mandible in, in more vertical and backward direction, uh, the increasing in, a, uh, in a lower anterior facial height, uh, open bite, and retrognathia. Craniofacial abnormalities that are associated with the nasal obstruction are usually characterized with mouth breathing, narrow airway, airway space, ossus, elongated face, high arch, palate, malocclusion, narrow nasal architecture, and wide columella. The overall uh, feature can be characterized as upper airway obstructed faces. The deleterious impact of chronic nasal obstruction on craniofacial deformities is complete by puberty. And in this form, uh, the, whether the, the chronic nasal obstruction produce craniofacial deformities or whether the uh, craniofacial deformities produce the nasal impire, impairments is still unclear. And in this kind of form of craniofacial deformities, the uh, decrease in nasal permeabilities resulting from nasal stenosis, uh, elevation of the nasal floor, deviated septum, <coughs> enlargement of nasal turbinates. And when you faced with uh, these uh, developed elements of this craniofacial deformation, the opportunity for successful treatment are small. Uh, the much of controversy regarding the relationship between chronic nasal obstruction and craniofacial deformities is related to treatment. Uh, we still don't know whether the medical intervention to relieve nasal airway obstruction in children influenced the pattern of facial growth. The, a lot of studies have showed uh, the significant positive change in facial growth one or two years after tonsillodenoidectomy. On the other side, in um, uh, the reviewed studies uh, uh, were not convincing in providing information uh, about the impact of different orthodontic treatment modalities on airway. And we were curious about this relationship and the aim of uh, this study was to evaluate the effect of chronic nasal obstruction and mouth breathing on dentofacial pattern. And in addition, it, uh, the aim was to compare cephalometric values between nasal and oral breathing children. We observed the 60 pediatric patient who had treated for malocclusion. The study group included 30 patients who had signs and symptoms of chronic nasal obstruction. The control group included 30 patients who uh, was the normal nasal breathers. Uh, there were almost equal females and males, and average uh, age of our patient were 
13 years. The patients were classified as a nasal or mouth breeders patient according to a predominant mode of breeding through the clinical through the history and clinical examination or orthodontic evaluation included dental examination, cephalometric analysis, dental study models. Uh, cephalometric analysis was uh, made uh, to compare the parameters that might be influenced by, by, uh, by a different respiratory mode of breathing uh, in the two group and uh, cephalometric points marked in cephalogram and the cephalometric analysis were obtained. Uh, these are angles. These are angles used in the present study. Without going into details, uh, these angles related to the um, degree of protrusion or retrusion of mandible or, or, or maxilla. Degree of inclination, um, maxilla or mandible relative to the skull base or palatal plane. Direction of mandibular growth, angle, angle, gonial angle, sorry. And there are the linear cephalometric variables used in this study. Uh, this related to anterior or posterior facial height. Data provided by questionnaire obtained by parents are given in a table. We had no useful data regarding to um, duration and time of occurrence of chronic nasal obstruction obtained by parents, so we didn't include these in analysis, unfortunately, I think. And data provided by clinical examination. Uh, there was an homogeneous distribution regarding to linear cephalometric variables between nasal and mouth breeders. According to the previous study, we expected increasing in, uh, in anterior facial height. Uh, the mean value of some uh, angular cephalometric variables as SNGOGN, PPM, PRGOGOME were significantly increase in mouth breeders group, which is in accordance with the results obtained by previous study. And this study led to the conclusion that subject with the mouth breeders showing more accentuated inclination of mandibular plane or rotation of mandible in more backward direction. If chronic nasal obstruction is indeed important variable initiation dental and skeletal de deformities in predisposing ch children, every effort should be made to provide the normal nasal function because delay or absence of appropriate intervention results in abnormal dentofacial developments and successful orthodontic treatment. And otorhinolaryngologist, pediatrician, pediatric dentist, orthodontist uh, must take note of uh, chronic mouth breathing in predisposing children. Both craniofacial form and function should be treated as early as possible, and the procedure and timing should be determined uh, by the age of the child and the magnitude of the nasal obstruction and dentofacial deformities. And the father, well control longitudinal uh, observational study are uh, needed to establish direct relationship between chronic nasal obstruction and craniofacial deformities. The variables are numerous and uh, must be placed in appropriate scientific perspective. Thank you. Questions? No questions? Ah, Tommy Taiwan. Uh, do you have some permanent uh, relationship and uh, collaboration with the uh, orthodontic clinic? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, this uh, study conducted uh, uh, in collaboration with the stomatology and department. Was the the earliest age of patients when orthodont uh, is eager to take them under their diagnostic and uh, treatment? I was uh, actually orthodonts don't like uh, children uh, uh, before permanent dentition so and they should wait until let's say 10 years of age to uh, get in uh, this procedure and treatment of orthodonts 
So it means 10 years of uh, mouth breathing to start to, to start uh, repair treatment. this problem. Mm -hmm. The time uh, would, uh, would seem critical for, for diagnostic and for uh, treatment of this patient. And you, uh, you, can, uh, you have to be uh, familiar with your orthodontist and to treat this patient uh, as early as possible. And uh, th this study may uh, help the med medical practitioner to be more aware, to better treat this patient. And I think it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's really important to treat the, this patient uh, simultaneously, in the same time, orthodontics and otorhinolaryngologists, and as early as possible. Thank you.